Hi guys, Luke from MGN here, and today we're gonna to talk about Dark Deity. I'm super excited for this one, I've been looking forward to the release, and it's just come out today. So it's trending on Steam, it's trending on Twitter, it's trending on everything you can trend on. You wanna know whether the game is right for you, and how it stacks up, whether it's any good, stick with me, I'm gonna go through it from every angle right now, very comprehensive review, and then you'll know. Stick with me. All right, I'll preface this review by voicing my bias. My impressions of the game might be different from yours for a few reasons, and I like to be honest in these scenarios. The first is which is that I'm the target audience for this game. I've wanted Fire Emblem to have a serious competitor for a long time and yearn for the Sacred Stone's glory days. So, now that we have a PC tactical RPG that is exactly what I've been looking for, well, there's, there's my bias. The second is that MGN is a division of the same company that publishes the game. As such, I, I receive the free copy of the game in exchange for a fair and honest review. With that said and out of the way, let's get to the review. What is Dark Deity? Dark Deity is a strategic RPG, and if you're looking for comparisons, like I mentioned, the earlier days of Fire Emblem is a pretty good one. Uh, you can also compare it to something like Wargroove, if you're looking for Steam games. It's developed by Sword and Axe LLC and is available on Steam right now today. The key features that the game boasts are a heavy focus on strategic gameplay, choices that matter, huge cast of characters, lots of classes and class variety. How does that stack up against how the game actually plays and performs though? Well, we're going to see in today's MGN review of Dark Deity. We're going to judge Dark Deity on six points. We'll give each point a score from 10, and those points will factor into the final verdict, depending on their importance to the game and the genre. We're going to store Dark Deity on one difficulty. Is the game challenging enough to maintain the player's interest in the gameplay throughout an entire playthrough? Or is it so easy that the game becomes boring quickly? Do choices indeed matter? And are there consequences that actually feel consequential? Are there different difficulties? How's all that handled? That's point one, difficulty. Moving on to point two, that will be appearance. The studio has chosen to present the game in the classic style for this genre, in pixels. Does that feel dated or is the appearance a return to form and where the genre should probably just sit? How are the sprites? How are the animations? We're gonna go through that point two appearance. Point three is sound. Sound is gonna include a few points in and of itself and that will contribute to the overall score. The first being the game's soundtrack, the second being the sound effects themselves, and the third being the voice acting. We'll go over each of those to form the score for point three sound. Point number four is story. Simply put, RPG games need to have a good and engaging story. They need to make the player want to be in the game's universe and give context to the player's min-maxing and strategic gameplay. How does the story in Dark Deity stand up against those high expectations? We'll see when we get to point four. The fifth point, the second to last one, is fun and it is crucial because if you're not having fun when you sit down to play a game, What's the point? Can you have fun and enjoy a 20 minute session of the game? Can you have fun and enjoy a two hour session? We'll get there, point five fun. The last point is price, that's number six. It's the final contributing factor to our overall score. Does the amount of time and enjoyment that you can get out of Dark Deity stack up against how much money you have to fork out for it? Is it underpriced, is it overpriced, too long, too short? All of this falls on the price. Let's get started with the review. For difficulty, I've decided to go with a strong start. It's a 10 from 10. I'm gonna start this point by saying that Dark Deity does difficulty like I wish all games did. They let you tailor the experience to exactly how difficult you want the game to be. How is this achieved? Well, you can customize how much experience you're gonna get, how much gold you receive from defeating foes in the level, what classes the enemies are, and even what items are scattered throughout. With this feature, you can play the game exactly how you want to, and you can replay the game with different variables to challenge yourself if you want to. It's exactly how difficulty should be handled in most cases, and it's good to have all those options laid at your feet to find the perfect mix for you. I know what you're thinking, there's a downside to this, and that you won't have a traditional experience that you can compare your playthrough to how the game was intended to be played. Don't worry, Dark Deity has you covered there as well. If you don't want to go through the finite details and craft your own difficulty, there are already three modes included in the game for an easy, medium, and hard experience, depending on your preference, gameplay experience, and just your general desire for a challenge. So don't be concerned if you don't want to make the game more or less challenging by your own hand, it's fine. 
So that's how the game handles selecting a difficulty, but how is the challenge within the game? Well, the key note that experienced players will want to know about the game is that it doesn't include permadeath. You won't be losing a character that you've worked on or you've formed a bond with that you particularly like. And I know this will seem like a bad thing to veterans, but don't let that, you know, don't mistake that for there being no consequences in the game. You know, if you're not playing well and using a strategy, you will be punished, just not with permadeath. What are those consequences and do they force enough mental acrobatics to make the game a challenge throughout? They're called grave wounds. If one of your units is felled in battle, they'll be inflicted with a grave wound. The unit that died, well, quote unquote died, will have one random stat reduced by 10%. Having a fighter lose 10% strength or HP, it's pretty crucial. So you won't lose the unit, but what the grave wound system does do is that it forces the player to be constantly thinking about their moves and planning well. This is what you want from a tactical RPG, real consequences, without the game feeling cheap or overly punishing. Not so punishing that it becomes annoying more than it is intriguing. And Dark Deity does it well. It's intriguing, but it doesn't become annoying. You're forced to think, strategize ahead, or you're gonna pay the consequences. For the handling of difficulty customization, the preset levels, and the grave wound system that I'm a big fan of, I'm forced to give difficulty in Dark Deity nothing less than a 10. We're gonna move on to point two, which is appearance. I'm again have to give Dark Deity a 10 from 10 on appearance. If you've been following the development of the game, you'll know that getting the art just right has been the point of pride for the studio. The sprites and animations have been crafted with feedback and the result is obviously dedicated creation. The sprite work itself is fantastic and no two classes or units that shouldn't look alike do. You can tell classes at a glance and there's no visual clutter with pixels during the more graphic intensive sections of the game, like when characters collide during their fight animations, big critical hit shafts, etc. I like the decision to make the game pixelated, honestly. All the best tactical RPGs have been in this art style. The best ones are pixelated. And if you're gonna try and make a game that is the genre's return to form after releases from other studios and developers have been pretty disappointing lately for veterans, then you should do it in the art style that those veterans are accustomed to. I'm not sure if that's the intent, but it's appreciated nonetheless. However, if you're new to the genre, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need a history on TRPG games to understand why the game's in pixel. It's purposeful and it looks good to the eye regardless. If I have to make one comparison on the sprite work and dedication to the pixelated art style, I'd have to go with something similar to Octopath Traveler. If you're familiar with that, well, this is what you can expect. And that's pretty high praise, to be honest. As far as how demanding the game is graphically, we played it on a moderately powerful PC and had literally no issues with stuttering, frame drops, anything like that throughout the game. Even the more detailed or what you would think would be GPU intensive sections, no. What does that mean? Well, it opens the game up for a lot of players, I guess, who want to play something like this on PC but don't own a powerful NASA supercomputer. Chances are whatever you have lying around will run Dark Deity just fine without turning a PC or laptop into like a superheated volcano. You're gonna be fine. So, for choosing the most appropriate art style, then having the desire and ability to execute something from the past and make it modern and crisp, again, I can't really help but give Dark Deity a 10 for point two appearance. Okay, moving on, point three, that's sound. Sound, I'm going to give Dark Deity a nine from 10. The first point we're gonna cover for the game's sound is the soundtrack itself. You can purchase the soundtrack on Steam right now for $9.95 AUD. It features 51 tracks for about an hour's worth of listening. It's composed by Sam Hughes Huss, I'm sorry Sam, and Andy Hahn and Adam Schmieder. I wanted to specifically name those composers in this review for the level of enjoyment that I've gotten out of the Dark Deity soundtrack. It's superb and I don't have a single complaint about the composition. It fits thematically with the game throughout, it's blood pumping where appropriate, it's somber where it needs to be, it all just feels very in sync with the story. And if you listen to the soundtrack standalone after you finish the game, you'll be brought back to the specific moments because the scores of the soundtrack make those elements really impactful. I suggest checking the soundtrack out even if you're not a fan of the game or the genre in the end, because it makes excellent studying music or review writing music. The second point we're going to look out for sound is sound effects. 
The most concise way that I can explain the quality of the sound effects in Dark Deity is that everything sounds exactly as you would expect it to. Arrows sound like they've been snapped from a bowstring, weapons interacting with armor sounds as it should, and there's not really an example that I can give you that really hits the ear wrong. Maybe the sound effects for magic aren't super inspired, but they're not wrong per se. Sure, sometimes sound effects won't stand out to you when you sit down to play a game, that's just the nature of them. But Dark Deities are done well, and there's not any sound effect that's terribly jarring or off-putting enough to where it pulls the player out of the experience. So sound effects get a check, a pass. The third point for sound is going to be the voice acting, and I have to say that the casting and execution of voice acting in Dark Deity is some of the highest in its class. It's something that can't be ignored, regardless of how much focus or attention you're giving the game. Whilst it can come not as often as maybe I would have liked, but what is there is of pretty high quality. I say this because the voice acting is mostly between player interactions, it's not it's pretty rare, and the chiefest of voice lines will be during your combat, like, you, it's just not often enough. This means that a lot of the game's story and exposition doesn't capitalize on the voice acting talent at all, and sometimes it makes those moments maybe seem a little dull, a little lifeless. But Having said that, like I mentioned, the casting and the performances of what's actually there are fantastic. Each character's voice fits their personality and look, and it's easy to tell through the enthusiasm and vigor that the voice lines are delivered with that the cast is proud of their inclusion in the game. For these points overall combined, I've decided, like I said, to assign sound, in general, a 9 from 10. Moving on to the next point, which is story, the game's story, I've decided to give Dark Deity an 8 from 10 for its story. The story behind Dark Deity isn't anything groundbreakingly new, but that doesn't, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The fantasy tropes that we know and love are fantasy tropes for a reason. There's a calamity, there's a king, there's a war, there's troops. You could pretty much fill in the blanks the rest yourself, you get it. I know what you're thinking. Luke, that kind of sounds like you haven't enjoyed the story, why have you rated it so high? Well. My answer would be that just because the story is familiar and used often in the genre, that doesn't mean that it's told poorly here, or that the studio Sword and Axe LLC haven't added their own nuance to that kind of tale. The game does enough with the plot to provide interest to the gameplay, and it gives you enough curiosity earlier uh, in the game to incite your interest in how the story will end up and finish. There are also witticisms in writing along the way, and all the characters are pretty likeable. Or play their role in antagonism well. You'd think with such a big cast of play playable characters that some would get lost in development, personality or story-wise, or that some of them would feel similar, but to my surprise that wasn't really the case. You'll get to know the characters quickly, they'll have their own development over the course of the game, and Dark Deity puts this on show really well with what the game calls the bonding mechanic. Interactions between the characters as their friendships develop throughout your playthrough. This is what stood out for me most from a story aspect. These bonding moments really flesh out the characters well. They tell interesting sub-stories and make you genuinely care about your, the characters that you control. With that care comes another element to the strategic gameplay. You gain more of a desire to not have your units gain grave wounds once you get to know them in their life. It's for these nuances to the fantasy tropes and the crafting of fantastic characters that I've decided, like I said, Dark Deity getting an 8 for its story. Moving on to the second to last point in fun. Sword and Axe know exactly what the tactical RPG player wants. Well, that's what it seems like anyway. Specifically, I'm talking about the class system within the game. You can evolve, quote unquote evolve, your units at level 10 and then again at level 30 with a huge variety of branching trees to choose from. You can make all-rounder with range, magic, melee, or you can specialize in certain weapon types and archetypes, damage types. You, you get the picture. There are so many options when it comes to classes that you're going to look forward to leveling up to the evolved levels so much and crafting the characters that you know into who you want them to be. There's dragons, there's assassins, there's everything you'd want. 54 classes in total and choosing and the evolving, for lack of a better word, your units is honestly what I've wanted in this genre to this degree. Others have it, but not to this degree. I've wanted that for a really long time. The freedom that the player is presented with, the levels of customization and min-maxing that you can achieve, and the satisfaction for crafting your units is done perfectly. 
I know that's not entirely the reason that people enjoy this games in this genre, but perhaps not what everyone looks for. But I absolutely love it, and the class system made me made the game extremely fun for me, especially in comparison to some disappointing competitors of late. There's no gender locking, it's, it's all very free, it's very satisfying. If that's not your key focus in enjoying a tactical RPG, fear not, because the game earns its tactical tag, also. As you'd expect, before each counter you'll be able to fine tune your squad, you buy weapons, you upgrade your weapons, and so forth. Then you get the turn-based tactical gameplay itself. You're given an objective, your guys against their guys, and then you come up with a plan of attack yourself. You fill in the ranks. It all plays as it should, and it's going to be very familiar to fans of the genre without being gatekept behind experience. And the fights themselves are just as fun as perfecting your units. So there are no hiccup hiccups for Dark Deity for the enjoyment that you'll get from any of the aspects of the gameplay. I struggled to think of a flaw in this respect, and that fact earns it a 10 from 10 on fun. The last point, like I mentioned, point six is price. I've decided to assign Dark Deity a 10 from 10 on price as well. Sword and Axe and Freedom Games have launched the game at 20% off, but the full price thereafter is going to be $35.95 AUD for the foreseeable future. So we're going to judge the price comparison on gameplay and enjoyment against the full price, as that'll be around longer than the sale, and I think it's a true reflection of the commitment you need to make currency-wise in order to play the game. What I said that the price is a reflection on how long you're going to be playing the game, it's actually much longer, and for only $35.95 is pretty undemanding on the wallet. The amount of time that you're going to get is pretty different depending on how you play RPGs, simply put. If you like to rush through, just experience the story, play an easy, smash it out, not min-max or delve into the subplots, you, you can finish the game in about 20 hours, pretty quick. However, if you take your time, really experience every facet of the game, make your chapters perfect, experiment with the different difficulty variables, I'm going to say you can expect up to 50 hours, maybe 60. That's on a single playthrough. And because the difficulty and mechanics can be changed so much, the result is a much different game each time. Dark Deity has a lot of replay value. You can invest in favor of different units on a second playthrough, make different decisions, use different classes. You can take those 20 hours or 50 hour playthroughs and double or triple them with how many playthroughs that you can get out of the game before you run out of new and interesting ways to play. So much replay value. So clearly the playtime isn't an issue when it comes to price. You're certainly getting your money's worth there. But that doesn't make the price score on by itself, no. The game needs to be enjoyable throughout that entire time to get a good score. And like I said, there are so many ways to play in subsequent replays after you finish the game. The game got a 10 for fun. It's truly a blast. So there's no concerns when it comes to the game being worth the money when it comes to your enjoyment factor as well. So longevity, a lot of fun, it's not expensive. You're getting plenty of playtime in a game that is going to be the goalpost for strategic RPGs for a very long time. All $35.95 AUD, that's an easy 10 for price. What does that mean our final verdict is? It's going to be a 9.5 out of 10. Very close to a 10 out of 10. And that makes it a game of the year contender for us. Much like Hades did last year, in the indie... Scope, Dark Deity has the potential to sneak up on the big budget games launched in 2021 and surprise everyone and steal the crown for the game of the year. Anyway, that's going to wrap things up for our comprehensive review of the Sword and Axe LLC and Freedom Games game in Dark Deity. We at MGM hope you enjoyed our coverage thus far in the game, and if you agree or disagree with any of the points we've made, we would absolutely love to hear from you on the MGN.gg blog. Um, the YouTube channel, MGN TV, our new Twitter, at MGN underscore TV, and the new Discord. Links for all these will be in the description of the video review. Uh, keep an eye out for more Dark Deity content because it's coming. We're working on it. We'll get it out to you. Thanks for listening so much.